I am Lisa with Lisa Boone Designs and today we're going to be making this table have lots of fun pops of color and cool interesting texture. Here's our before picture. Had a lot of scratches, was in relatively good shape, but you always want to clean your piece. I reused this bottle. I put water vinegar and just a little bit of blue dawn and I clean it very well if it still needs cleaning I might do it again or I might use something stronger after I've cleaned it with this solution then I do another clean through with just vinegar and water to remove all of the soap residue and then if it needs more cleaning I'll clean it again but this one was fairly clean now I did notice while I was cleaning that it had some chips on the leg. So I just used Typebox Quick and Thick and Iron Orchid Design Clay to fill in those gaps and I just smoothed it out with my fingers. That works really well. I've actually used that on crown molding before in my house and it works very well. You'd never ever know it. What's really great about using IOD air dry clay versus let's say wood putty, you don't have to seal it first before you paint. It's paintable. So these are Christmas ornaments, but the moment that I saw them, when they showed them to us months ago before they came out, I thought, oh my gosh, that's gonna be great for details on furniture. Iron Orchid Designs air dry clay is an artisan quality. There's so many things that you can do with it. You can make jewelry. It's so much fun. You want to keep it in a Ziploc bag after you've opened the bag because you don't want it to dry out. So here I'm showing how I just use one of the cavities to make my mold. I really recommend you sprinkling a little bit of cornstarch first. I was so eager and I forgot, but I still got a very, very good casting. You just want to use the back of your hands to rub it, make sure it's nice and smooth because that is the surface that's going to go directly on your piece and you want it to be nice and flat so that it would adhere. And see how beautiful the patent pending rim really helps you to have that smooth edge. Try not to stretch it too much when you're getting it out of the mold so that you won't have cracking. It helps to reduce it. Now you can get cracking and that's okay. You could always fill it in with more clay or with Alex Fast Dry Paintable Caulking. I just use my quick and thick and I apply it and see how it's great on vertical surfaces. And I try to get it pretty even and I'm just shift it around for a little bit until I get it exactly where I want it. You want to make sure that it's sticking to your piece and so occasionally you want to go look at it. Don't push it too hard but make sure that you reconnect it to your piece. You could use tape. I generally don't. Next I take my brush to get the excess glue off of the piece and this is what it looked like. I think it really added a lot of nice texture and value and interest. If you follow me on um, TikTok or Instagram or, or on my Facebook page, I posted a reel where I took, I, I recently went through all of my paint and I noticed that a lot of my paint that I hadn't used in a while was getting chunky and, um, and, and I, maybe I just had like a drop in the bottom. So I took several jars and I mixed a whole bunch of paint and created brand new colors. So I created this color and my daughter painted the whole outside of the jar. So you can see it looks white, but it has a blue tint because prom queen, which is a pale blue color, was one of the colors that we use. And it came out more blue than what we thought. We had a lot of whites in here. Um, and let me see if I could find, there are still chunks. There are still like, can you see that chunk right there on the top? That's an actual like chunky piece. What's great about DIY paint is that you can reconstitute it and see how there's still pieces. So I, when I opened it, I went ahead and I stirred it a little bit more. I added some water in all of the jars and on the top of the jar, I actually did on all of them, 
put the color that's inside so that I don't get confused because it might say weathered wood, but it's a color that I created. So um, I did that with several of them and I was able to salvage a lot of paint and create interesting colors that I could use for future projects. So that's the goal, to use up this paint. I painted the very top. I've got Liquid Sunshine, Old 57, Mermaid Tail, Summer Crush. It's just a generic table, maybe something that you might find in like Pier 1 or Marshall or Burks, something like that. It's just, just a side table that's made to look like it has um, tile on it. And so I wanted to play off of that idea, but with pops of color. So it just, you know, reminds me of just a tin tile. And so I wanted it to look like it's been aged and old and painted over several times. If you want specific colors in your layers, do one at a time and let them dry so that they don't muddy together. Because secondary colors will muddy up like these colors do in certain sections. I didn't care about that. I wanted some of the blending. I wanted different colors. Like for example, the teals and the yellow make green. So it helps you to have less colors that you work with, but you get more colors that are underneath, if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and so I just used the chip brush and I just applied my random colors and it looks ugly it always looks ugly before it looks better and now you can see some of that green popping through a little bit of brown and it just gives it a lot of interest and makes it look like it has been painted over time I'm taking a remnant from a decoupage paper by Roy Cycled and I'm going to apply it on this table. It's like the perfect size. It might seem like it's clashing and it's not going to work, but trust the process. I always like to add black to my pieces of furniture, especially if it's very colorful. Black just helps to ground everything and this is very rustic and it, I think it turns out looking exceptionally well. In order to get a chippy layered look, I went ahead and I applied Elmer's glue. I let it get tacky and then I applied my top coat which is the color that I made up. When you're painting over the glue, you don't want to over brush. Just get your paint on there. One smooth stroke if possible. And in some sections, I dab it on for extra texture. Now that my liquid patina is dry and my paper is dry, I go ahead and I remove the excess paper using the sanding sponge, sanding away from my table. It gives you a nice clean, crisp edge. See how rustic it is? And it's layered even though it's neutral, so the top will look neutral. It'll just be the sides that have that pop of color. And then you can see as everything dried in certain sections, depending on how much glue there was, there was definitely cracking going on and I love that. You don't have to just get the cracking from milk paint, you can do it with DIY paint and glue. Then I took my black velvet and I went ahead and went around all of the edges of the table and even got a little bit on the paper and just kind of smudged it up just to make it all cohesive. And again, you notice I'm only using a chip brush on this project. These chip brushes are available on my website. Then I dry brush the black onto the sides and that really is what pulled it all together. I also did it on the legs and it picked up on all the texture, all the layers, and it really, really made it look amazing in my eyes. 
let me know in the comment what you think about this project. All of the products that I use can be found on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. You can get the links directly in the description. I also went ahead and dry brushed or brushed it lightly on that bottom shelf to also bring it all together. And because legs are very well used, I applied a little bit more black on the bottom of the legs. And then I also painted underside of that bottom shelf because that was a very thin piece of board and thin boards can buckle if they're not painted underneath. I cleaned up all the inside of where I over painted just with a wipe. Then I sealed the entire piece using Big Top, but I want to show you what it looked like before and now here is what it looks like now. I think, I think this girl got a glow up. Don't you think so? Let me know in the comments what you think and see how all the different sides look a little bit different because that's what aged paint would look like. It's rustic, it is dramatic, it's amazing. It's colorful, but yet it's neutral because I applied that light color on top. You have the black. It just makes it easy for someone who doesn't like a lot of color to introduce themselves to adding color into their home. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Ciao.